So let's look at the role of diplomacy and constructive dialogue in uh, uh, arriving uh, a position of compromise where uh, everybody's viewpoint will be critically in light without actually penalizing uh, others. Uh, thank you, thank you, Clarice. You know, um, as of late, one of the biggest problems that I have is that Africa in itself is struggling with its own inter diplomacy, where different African countries can be able to successfully work together towards a common goal. Um, and because of that, it's difficult for us to go to the rest of the world as a united front so that we can center ourselves and say that this is who we are and this is what we want as a continent or as a people of a continent. And that makes it very difficult. If you look at uh, uh, matters of diplomacy in the, in the continent, we currently have ECOWAS, which is willing to go to war for the West so that it can go to war with Niger. Why? Because they believe that um, Niger should not uh, take the decision that they have taken with the coup and etc. And uh, many other uh, uh, resulting policies that are coming out of the said coup. You, you see, so now it means that it becomes very difficult for us to say uh, what is the role of diplomacy moving forward. A difficult thing when you think about the role of ECOWAS right now in saying that we are willing to have our soldiers on standby against our own brothers and sisters who are our neighbors so that we can make sure that Niger is not able to kick out those who come from the West. What that says is that the an idea of diplomacy in order to liberate ourselves as a continent is very it's, 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 it's a very difficult one and one that I'm not going to to lie and say that I see the possibility of it being a successful uh, go to or move forward. Because if you think about it, if we believe that diplomacy and interworkings within the continent would result in us being able to say we cannot have laws which are going to subjugate a specific group of people to certain levels of abuse and discrimination, then what is going to happen is that we are now going going to start making this or going back to this argument of sovereignty that, okay, how are you able to say as a neighbor that mm, you, the, a specific country cannot apply this law in itself? Uh, because what that means is that you are having problems with matters that do not necessarily concern you. Uh, I think the most important thing that that really puts me off and that makes it very difficult for us I think the most important thing is that the role of the AU in us functioning as a continent is not, uh, it has not been sufficiently explored because the AU in itself, it should be the basis of uh, African unity between and amongst ourselves as a continent. And then we can get to the discussion of diplomacy, us being able to work with our neighbors for us to see a way forward as a continent. But the AU does not play a sufficient role in guiding other countries that are within the umbrella of Africa, you know. So if it had been able to play a better role, we wouldn't be finding ourselves in a situation where ECOWAS can be able to say, we are going to take control of situations where we are going to fight for external powers. You know, ECOWAS has always done this. Uh, did something similar with Mali, where they had that blockade, where they said that Mali cannot, uh, 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 they cannot fight for their own liberation and etc. But this is what I find very problematic because these are the same countries that have been uh, faced with a lot of challenges. The people, the population on the ground have been struggling, but ECOWAS never did anything. So now it makes you question the idea of diplomacy from your own region in itself, that if you're saying that you see the people on the ground are struggling, the people in the ground are not successful, uh, life is not as successful as it would ideally, uh, it, you would like it to be ideally for specifically your neighbor, you do nothing. When those people take a stand and say that we are tired of this corrupt um, neo-colonial neo -col uh, uh, society, we want to make a, a, a difference in our own realities on the ground, all of a sudden you now have this ability to say, you 
you know what we can we are going to fight go to war with these people you you see that means that it does not stand necessarily for the people themselves and if that is the case then it becomes very difficult for us to make an argument for diplomacy if we cannot interwork with ourselves and we cannot center the population of the continent all that I'm seeing is that these people see themselves in the future where they will have their own rebellions within the country, which will result in them being removed from power. So what they try to do is try to deter everyone else by going against these countries that have decided that they're going to take a different stance and they're going to fight against a system that is not for them. You know, so... <clears throat> With that being said, it means that ideas of something such as diplomacy being implemented on the ground and successfully so implemented on the ground become uh, uh, become very useless because at the end of the day, what we are seeing, especially with our leadership, is that it's every man for himself. What does not benefit them does not necessarily need to be focused on. They'd rather focus and center the most important thing, which would be their own uh, preservation. And how do you do that? You do that by making sure that you do not have the next rebellion in your foot steps you know so if that is the case then it makes it very difficult for us to step down as people of the continent and make an argument for diplomacy it it, 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 it is very frustrating but it realistically this is where we are and this is where we are finding ourselves it is it's it's it, it's not an easy way to move forward but what we should also be able to do is we should be able to have constructive engagement and communication which are not personal which are not emotional about some of these laws that we put out ourselves as a people or as leadership of the continent because there is no way that we can say that we agree that a president or a, a, a government is able to say that someone might face a uh, life in prison someone might face death for their choice of who they've decided to love i know that this is a very difficult engagement because some people will tell you that it's an african uh, to be a homosexual and whatnot but on what basis are you able to say that the way that you want uh, to live your life, others must live it in that specific way? Why are you the moral high ground of uh, a, 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 a moral hard ground and point of departure of people's sexuality and their choices? It gets very problematic, you know. We can engage it on multiple levels, but also we need to hold our own leadership to account. Because now the first thing that needs to happen is that uh, other countries that are around Uganda they should be engaging with the leadership. It, 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 it is a very difficult one, but I hope that I did to an extent touch on what you were asking, Clarice. Thank you.